I thought this segment was not great. I mean, there was no heat for this whatsoever. And then when Roddy says, we need to reform our group, you could tell they did not want them to reform the group. Hmm. They were waiting for Adam Cole to say, no, I'd rather be off on my own. And instead, Adam Cole goes, Roddy, I think that's a great idea. And the crowd is dead silent. <laughs> like, what? That's a great idea? Tell them that they're paid by a con. Everything that can go wrong. Damn it. God. First, I'm trying to make some food for these children. I can't find a can opener. Then I have one of those multi-tool gimmicks. That's if you're, like, stranded on Everest and right. you just need to open a can. Then, for some reason, every now and then, this stupid YouTube window, the music's playing when I'm playing the other music. I don't know why. Then my trackpad died. That's why we're minutes late. So you watched Rampage? Yeah. All right. We well, all did. I thought Craig didn't. No, I didn't. Oh. I didn't want to. Well, we all then watched AEW Rampage. For the record, I thought it was a much better wrestling you, show than you usual. You told me that, and then I was watching it, and I got mad at you. <laughs> this company needs a soft brand split. All right? I concur. Because yes. there's virtually okay. no star power whatsoever on Collision. That's fair. There is no star power on Rampage. All the star power is on Dynamite. Because we had Collision and Battle of the Belts, Rampage, there was actually a point to everything on Rampage. Yes. Everything exactly. on Rampage was building towards Collision or Battle of the Belts. They beat the Outrunners. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? <sighs> what in the fuck are you doing? Why wow. did you beat the Outrunners? Why did you beat my... Why? Like, I get it. The Beast Mortos and Roosh, they're like a new group. Let's get them over. That's fine. There's a lot of teams. There's a lot of nothing happening teams in AEW. Tons of them. It's like 220 people on the roster or whatever. Why did you book them against the Outrunners and beat the Outrunners? The Outrunners are the hottest team in this company right now. I was fucking baffled. Aghast. I don't understand it. What's up, Granny? Know. I don't know. Hey, are you ready to turn uh, 95 here soon? No. What does it matter? What's wrong with my thing here? <sighs> it's always something. Since we have the return of bad blood, what retired pay-per-view events would you bring back? Anything but World War Three. Do you realize if, if AEW brought back the World War III 60-person uh, three-ring battle royal, that's still <laughs> only a third of their roster? <laughs> They, they should have a nine-ring battle royal and just get Don't everybody. Don't give him any ideas. Get everybody, everybody out there, oh, I can, men I, and I, women alike. I can see this grid in my head. I don't I don't want to make this sound like I'm burying AEW, but they've been running in, you know, 18,000 seat buildings and drawing 2,000. Plenty of room to put nine rings in there, right? Yeah. It should be eight because you don't want the one in the middle. The middle should be filled with lava. <laughs> We on the one uh, minute intervals for two hundred and twenty wrestlers. <laughs> it's the whole four and a half hour show. Have Who can last that. four and a half hours to win World War Eight? I am so underutilized. This person wants to know if a title's on the line in World War Eight. Sure, make one. An eight sided belt. <laughs> yeah. Why are we not like our own writing team? I'm trying to come up with an idea Tony would like. Getting rid of belts is not one of those ideas. <laughs> Adding eight more belts he gets to buy is clearly, you know what I'm saying? Rod Van Dam versus Triple H. Unforgiven. Rod comes out all confident, prancing around. Still funny. The crowd likes Rod. He's a fast-moving start. Rod has a bottle of water. Another side lock by Rod. <laughs> Triple H gets Rod in some... Rope twist. The ref has to warn him. Rod does a top rope jump. Gets Triple H down for the count. No ref. Triple H does the nasty thing. You guys know what that is. I, I don't. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> With Rod? I thought then he was the nasty thing. Gave you the Triple H. Triple H thinks Flair is after him, but Flair turns around and hits Rod in the gut with the hammer. D. Lo Brown and Kidman were talking about why Flair did that. Who should walk in but Victor? No way. It was Victor. What? I can't believe Victor ended up on that show. Whatever became of... What a tie-in. His name is Rob, and you call him Rod every time. And Vinny is I now just... not. Oh, stop, Granny. Every I... single time you called him Rod. I thought it was Rod Van Dam. No, it's Rob. 
I told you that, and then you yelled at me and said you called him Rob. Oh, well, whatever. In the parking lot of the arena, with the greatest collection of dorks I've seen in a long, Ugh. long time. The idea is they're waiting for the Moxley Combat Club pickup truck to arrive, and they're going to get him. But they're all just like pumping their fist. And, ah, I can't wait. Ah, come on, let's go, let's go. For nothing. And if anybody would know massive dorks. Yes. It's Vinny. It takes one to know one. Ah, come on, come on, guys, let's go, let's go. Shelton is uh, working these days, much like his old Minnesota wrestling partner, Brock Lesnar. Suplex dude, stand over him looking scary for an hour. It works. I must say, half-shaven was still a vast improvement of what this haircut was before. What? Yes. Are you kidding me? The haircut he had before was the best haircut he's ever had. Have you watched Kyle Fletcher's career? He's had a lot of bad haircuts. He's had as many bad haircuts as I have. Yeah. There is a contingent of fans, as we all know, that are not happy with Chris Jericho still having a prominent role in AEW in 2024. And afterwards, somebody on threads asked, why is Chris Jericho the Ring of Honor champion? And the official ROH Wrestling Threads account replied, because he beat Mark Briscoe in Ladder War. <laughs> great. I thought this segment was uh, not, not great. I mean, there was no heat for this whatsoever. And then when Roddy says, we need to reform our group, you could tell they did not want them to reform the group. Mm. They were waiting for Adam Cole to say, no, I'd rather be off on my own. And instead, Adam Cole goes, Roddy, I think that's a great idea. And the crowd is dead silent. <laughs> like, what? That's a great idea? We must now discuss Camille versus Queen Aminata. It sucked. A poor outing. Uh, th this is This is like... I, I hate this. This this is Rusev and Lana level storyline here. I don't know what the fuck's going on here. And I don't know how in the world. I don't know, man. Kip Sabian left with Christian. Yeah, that happened. I just cannot get into private party. I watched them get... You better. I think it's most likely they win the tag team titles. Because Zay very much said if we lose, we split up forever. Like, private party would never team up again. Like... I, I don't know, man. Moxie has also abducted Chuck Taylor. Let's put him on his neck. Orange Cassidy, who is a, one of Chuck's best friends, was just a few steps late. Orange is just catatonic. He's just on his knees, staring at the broken body of Chuck Taylor. Can't respond. I love this Orange Cassidy character because his gimmick is simultaneously that he doesn't give a fuck about anything, but he's also the most sensitive guy on the roster. Something's bugging him. Something's making him sad, but he doesn't give a shit. It's quite the uh, quite the character. Lash is is gigantic. Yes. And man, when Lash got in there with Kyrie Sane, I was like, oh my god, she's gigantic. Yes. Javon is now me, and these other geeks are the fucking NXT writing team. Frazier says, "You're young, you got time. You got time." Javon is like, "Is this guy fucking with me?" And he says, "Listen." I am sick of people telling me I'm young and I got time. Ethan is asking Trick, have you ever been busted open? You ever tasted your own blood? And I'm looking at Trick in his white fur coat. I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be a gruesome segment. Then nothing ever happened. You don't bleed on a white fur coat? You kidding me? Well, I'm sure it's not real Golly. fur. But, Could be uh, alpaca. I'm not a very big guy. And so uh, I'm looking through all the alpaca. I just hit. Oh. He hit everything. Nikita Lyons. Oh, my God. Did you write down her line? I did not write down. You didn't? She's got a southern accent for some reason. Hmm. <laughs> Why? I guess she's from the south. I don't know where she's from. But anyway, she goes, look, the lioness is back, and I'm on the prowl. And best believe that after all I've been through, I'm always going to pounce first. Yeah. <laughs> I said... What did you just fucking say? <laughs> that's, that's terrible. What did you say to these two <laughs> men? So once again, they're out of time. Literally, they got two words out the lights go out. And then uh, Zarya appeared. The announcers are screaming at the top of their lungs. And all of a sudden, I'm watching some commercial for something. Yep. Because they went over again. Yeah. But they are having a hard time hitting this mark. <laughs> 